new product time. Okay, we're going to just jump right in. Yeah. Okay, coming soon. It's not out yet, but a lot of people have been asking about it, so I wanted to get it in the store for signups. Is the new Prop Maker Feather. This will be out in a week or two, hopefully. Um, but you can sign up now and you'll be notified when it's in stock. It's uh, the latest in our series of RP2040 Feather Designs. Um, but this one is designed specifically to make it really easy to make props, animatronics, uh, and toys without having to do any soldering. It's got um, an I2S amplifier, so it kind of improves on the, the prop maker feather wing by having digital audio as a little servo port so you can um, uh, connect uh, small hobby servos. It's got a button input. It's got a list 3 dh triple axis accelerometer and a NeoPixel driver, as well as, of course, all the feather pins um and all the gpio that you would normally want to use you've got the four adcs and like 21 gpios and battery usb c for debug and charging um and there you can even disable the lipo charger uh we'll show how to do that later if you want to run this off of double a's because we're doing some prop projects and we're like oh what if we want to reuse uh, an existing you know double a battery pack um you can probably do that so terminal blocks pre-assembled make it easy to uh, uh screw terminal anything you want on It'll be coming to the Adafruit shop soon, but I want to just preview it now. Uh, we have an update for the Adafruit Feather ESP32 S2. Like many of our other feathers that use the LC709203 battery monitor, that battery monitor has been discontinued. So we're now uh, revising them all to use the MAX17048. Um, this has the MAX17048. It's otherwise identical. It has a TFT screen and buttons, um, stomach QT port, uh, ESP32 S2 battery and all that good stuff. But the battery monitor has just changed from the LC to the Max um, type, and we have libraries for Arduino and CircuitPython on both. Okay, next up. Uh, we have a new product from our friends across the pond at Pimeroni. This is an Inventor Hat Mini. It's interesting, it uses a very seesaw-like thing going on there. There's a chip um, from Neuroton that is pre-programmed with firmware that handles all the timing for servos and motors so that you don't have um, to do that on the Raspberry Pi or have a separate I2C chip. Uh, our Cricut hat's, you know, much more complicated, but it's kind of the same idea. But this is uh, less expensive and smaller, so it can drive um, eight servos. Oh, mom, that goes with the people. Oops. Sorry about that. Everything looks black and gold, I know. It's got a stomach QT port and a user button. It's got uh, two motor controllers with a DRV8833, which you can get again, and an I2S amplifier. Everyone loves this uh, Max 98. 357 um and it uses also ports you can use with uh, encoder motors so you can have um something that has encoder motors for a more precise motor control and it's a fully assembled uh mini hat bonnet um that you can plug right into your raspberry pi computer all right and the story of the show besides you lady ada our team our customers our community um has a little bit of a story yes so we actually uh, got this email like a week ago. Um, they'd seen the video, but they were like, this is what it's used for. And I'm like, it is. Uh, so this is a captain of a first team, so it's a robotics team, and they have a board that they're required to use. And um, if you want to do something funky with it that isn't part of like the first ecosystem, it's very difficult. Uh, so they want to use NeoPixels because they want to light up the robot, but nobody's written a NeoPixel driving library for this chipset. Um, but they do have access to I2C, so now you they could use this to control NeoPixels, which is a very common request. This is it. Um, so this is just a bunch of NeoPixels, but uh, this is the board. Um, so the way the board works is it also has a little helper chip on there. And uh, let me show it on the overhead because it's um, it's not lit up, but I can show how it works. Yeah. I'll, uh... Okay, so... One second. Um, so let's say you have a microcontroller or a board. In this case, I'm using an RP2040 because, but it, it which does have NeoPixel support. But maybe um, all the PIOs are used on your RP2040, and so you want to uh, control some NeoPixels, or maybe you're using some exotic chip that again nobody's ported a NeoPixel driver for. Um, but you still want to control NeoPixels. You need that specific timing. It's very hard to do. So this chip on here, the um, AT Tiny. 1616 will take um, messages from I2C over here uh, from the RP2040 
and then convert you know it'll say light up this pixel that color and then when it's done it says please show the pixels and it will write the data out to the terminal ports um, so on the back there are five terminals one thing to note you will need separate five volt power the uh, neopixels need about 20 to 40 milliamps per led and so if you're driving in any Neo neopixels you're not going to be able to power them over this little thin wire here you only need a chunky power supply and chunky wires and uh, either connect them to this terminal block which then goes through and powers the neopixels um, or you can do something like this where um, you have a five volt power supply and you just power it directly into the red and black wires of your neopixel but then the signal wires the white and gray wires here are uh, signal and ground. Um, this data will come out of this chip, and so you just have to send the I squared C commands. And most chips, you know, do support um, I squared C fairly easily. And we've documented the commands. So if you're not using Circuit Python Blinka or you're not using an Arduino compatible chip, we have libraries for those. But if you're using something else, you could of course port it to that platform. You can drive up to um, I think 512 pixels, but I will note you're driving the pixels over I squared C, so it's not going to be very fast. You can run this at uh, one megahertz uh, I squared C, and that'll do much better. You know the default is 100 kilohertz on many platforms. I would bump it up to 400, 800, one megahertz clock rate, uh, and you should light up as few pixels. Sorry, you should write as few pixels as possible before you write the show the entire strip because every time you set change a pixel color it has to send a message back and forth to say hey this is what the pixel color should be um so that will slow it down and you're never going to be as fast as native neopixel driving but if you have no other way of driving neopixels it does work it just it basically as you get to like 200 pixels it can slow down a bit but for um you know about 100 pixels writing uh the data 800 kilohertz or one megahertz um, you'll get almost equivalent to native NeoPixel uh, driving speed. So um, this could be a really easy way for you to add NeoPixel support to a chipset that you've got, uh, as long as it's got I squared C, three volt or five volt I squared C it'll work with. And uh, it even has a little switch cap converter here. So if you're running this off of three volts, it'll generate a five volt signal uh, for a nice clean NeoPixel driver. And um, you can change the I squared C address if you want with these jumpers. Thank you.